Okay. <clears throat> All righty. We'll get ready to dive into it. I was just looking up some scriptures that I want to discuss briefly. I want to talk briefly about there was neither Jew nor Greek. So we'll get ready to dive into it in a minute. Shalom, shalom, let's go. Let's go. When you stay fired up for this truth, it's hard to sleep. Yeah, we are not as they, those that sleep in the night. So when this light is shining, the body is constantly saying, let's go. Awake. It's time to rise up out of sleep. Well, salvation is nearer than when we believe. I was looking at a video done by um, Saints of New Jersey. And they're seeing multiple chariot sightings. <clears throat> so he was showing a video of these chariots popping up everywhere. So it's like a, a large army that's pre-postured, ready to strike, ready to go. We're living in some exciting times, for sure. And these other nations are scared. They scared. Yep, constantly harassing us on YouTube, and messing with our videos. That's okay, though, because we know that the end is near. We can feel it in our spirit. That's right. Before I read this, Shalom. Barakatai Yahweh. Barakatai Yahweh Shai. Barakatai Yahweh. Barakatai Yahweh Shai. Kohalayla, Yahweh. Alahayanawa, Yahweh. A cut. Hero Israel, the Lord, our power is one. So, well, first of all, all praises to Yahweh. The Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh. Bahashem means in the name of, and Yahweh Shai is our deliverer or Lord and Savior. And then sometimes we say, Call Halayma, Yahawa, Alahayanawa, Yahawa, Akut. Hero Israel, the Lord our Father is one. The Lord our power is one. So I was mixing two different things together because my brain is scrambled right now. But anyway, let's read this first Isaiah 62. Let's go to verse 6. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace, day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence, and give him no rest till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. And that's what we're doing. We're constantly singing this new song, playing to the melody or to the tune of the Most High's will by preaching this gospel. <coughs> Isaiah 6, verse 8. The Lord hath sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength, surely I will no more give thy corn to be meat for thine enemies, and the sons of the stranger shall not drink thy wine for the which thou hast labored. So we'll no longer be trodden down by the heathen and Gentile nations to be their doormat, to be trampled underfoot. We're living in a time where the Lord is getting ready to raise up his heritage to reign on the earth. So the tabernacle of David is being resurrected from the graves. As we speak, so we're living in some exciting times. And when we study the Bible, when the tabernacle of David is raised up, 
the other nations are trodden down and subject under the rule and authority of the Israelites. Isaiah 62, <coughs> verse 9. But they that have gathered it shall eat it and praise the Lord, and they that have thought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. So we're going to eat at the Lord's table, at the king's table. So he's supping with his elect right now in a spiritual sense. But we're going to literally partake in the Lord's great supper in the kingdom to come. So the saints are getting ready to get rewarded. The saints are getting ready to be exalted. The saints are getting ready to be commissioned as governors, as rulers over the earth in righteousness. Now I want to step into the key focal point of this lesson. There is neither Jew nor Greek. One of the reasons that the Apocrypha was taken out is because it captures approximately 400 years under the Greek captivity for the Israelites. So around 1776, the Bible Destruction Group began to build a task force to take the Apocrypha out of the Bible. And their, their plans or their endeavors were discovered. So they went on hold for approximately 50 years. Around 1820, they would re-emerge and around 1826, they would eventually succeed at removing the Apocrypha out of the Holy Bible. And we're going to see why. In the Caribbean, the book of Maccabees was the source of many revolts and rebellions. <clears throat> so it became illegal to read the book of Maccabees and the Apocrypha was banned or outlawed altogether. So this famine of the word could easily seep in at a moment's notice in our time today because they're already coming up with different provisions to ban free speech that's perceived as threatening or hate. So right now, truthful communication is perceived as derogatory inflammatory. Let's go to 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 1. 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 1. I want to get right to the key point. We'll go ahead and read it. And it happened after the son, and it happened after that Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Chittim, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and Medes, that he reigned in his stead, the first over Greece. So we're reading around 330 BC. And there's an article that I want to dive into. <coughs> I'm going to get to the key point. I'm not going to make this long at all. Let's keep reading and made many wars, and won many strongholds, and slew the kings of the earth. So Alexander the Greek, under the Greek captivity, subdued the Medo-Persian Empire, and went through the ends of the earth, and took spoils of many nations, insomuch that the earth was quiet before him, whereupon he was exalted, and his heart was lifted up. And he gathered a mighty strong host and ruled over countries and nations and kings who became tributaries unto him. So that includes Jerusalem that became tributaries unto him. Right now we're being called Afro-American or American or black. So we're paying taxes to the daughter of Babylon, America. 
go to verse 5. And after these things, he fell sick and perceived that he should die. Wherefore, he called his servants, such as were honorable, and had been brought up with him from his youth, and parted his kingdom among them while he was yet alive. So Alexander reigned 12 years and then died, and his servants bear rule, everyone in his place. So Alexander the Greek, under him there was four major generals, uh, Lachimatius, Cassander, Ptolemy, and Seleucus. So the kingdom would be divided in these territories, or what you would call, there's another term for it. Mm. So they would divide the kingdom in four under Alexander the Greek's four generals. <coughs> 1 Maccabees 1 and 9, and after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years, and evils were multiplied in the earth. So this is the start of the wicked root under the Edomites, establishing a foothold or a position of authority in the earth. This is the planting of the wicked root of the Edomites. This is why Job said, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. And that hand translates back into power. So let's read that again. <clears throat> First Maccabees 1 and 9, and after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So, so did their sons after them many years, and evils were multiplied on the earth. So we we saw the rise in pedophilia, witchcraft, <laughs> witches and warlocks, all types of abominable acts, child blood sacrifice. They begin to spread the A B C D E F G agenda. Man on man, woman on woman. So this is the start of evils being increased on the earth exponentially. And there came out of them a wicked root, Antiochus surnamed Epiphanes, son of Antiochus the king, who had been hostage at Rome. And he reigned in the 130 and 7th year of the kingdom of the Greeks around 137 B.C. In those days, this is when the Israelites began to take on the customs, worships of the Greeks. This is why we hear that term or what Paul was talking about. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Well, we're going to keep going. <clears throat> 1 Maccabees 1, verse 11. <clears throat> In those days went there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us, for since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. So the same Israelites that we see today that are under a 501c3 contract. A contract is a covenant. Look at some of these camps out here. They're under a covenant with the beast, Rome, Edom, Edomites. So this is why if we understand reincarnation, everything begins to make sense. These same Negroes are back today just like in our Lord and Savior's time. There were Israelites that said, if we don't do something about this Yahweh Shai, the Romans will come and take away our position. That's in John chapter 11. See, let's read that again. First Maccabees 1, verse 11. 
in those days went there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us, for since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. So this device pleased them well. Then certain of the people were so forward herein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen. See, so they ob obtain paperwork, for lack of better words. We're seeing the same thing today. <laughs> you got to get a 501c3 license. And when you break that word license down, it goes into, I'm trying to remember exactly, if somebody can put it on the comment board, it goes into restrictions or limitations that LIC. Wow. See? So they begin to take on the identity, the covering of the Greeks. So they be begin to eventually what? Call themselves Greeks. See? First Maccabees 1, verse 13. Then certain of the people were so forward herein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinance of the heathen. Whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem according to the customs of the heathen and made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. So they were in the gym buck naked. Where you think we get Olympics from? Wrestling buck naked. So they were in the gym. <clears throat> Hymnosium. In nakedness. Yup, brother Gabar Gama. That word license. It says a permit from an authority to own or use something to do a particular thing or carry on a trade, especially alcoholic beverages. Yep, and that root word, <coughs> that root word, L-I-C, goes back into prohibitions, limitations, restrictions. <clears throat> so it sets boundaries on do's and don'ts, constraints. See, so the Israelites begin to take on the Greek culture and heritage, to take on the covering of the heathen. You see, and they made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. So you sold yourselves for not. Let's get that. So they were sold to do mischief. Let's go to Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55, verse 1. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that have no money, come ye by and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. So the Israelites begin to sell their soul, for lack of better words, to the customs of the other nations and commit idolatry. Let's go here. One moment.
Isaiah 52, verse 3. Let's go to Isaiah 52, verse 1. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. So the covering of the heathen is unclean, abominable, garments of filth. Isaiah 52, verse 2. Shake thyself from the dust, arise and sit down. O Jerusalem, loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. O captive daughter of Zion, for thus saith the Lord, Ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. So we sold out and forsook the holy covenant. Or you think we get the term, he sold out, she sold out. See, let's go back. <clears throat> First Maccabees chapter 1. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 15. And made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. So this is the start of the Israelites taking on the Greek identity, the heathen heritage. And taking off our skin, for lack of better words. So we put on a foreign covering, a foreign skin. When Adam and Eve sinned, they covered with a covering. So they were naked in their sin, trying to, trying to hide their iniquities, their rebellion. So they took on the covering of the other trees of the field of the other nations. Brother GMS Kabar Dhamma, Proverbs 11 and 21. Though hand join and hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. As a jewel of gold in a slime snout, so is a fair woman which is without discretion. So the daughter of Zion became a pig with a damn nose piercing, with a jewel in the nose, bugged out, following the other nations. So what good is a damn female pig wearing a diamond in her nose? That's just an abominable, rich pig. That's it. There's nothing honorable about that. So that is what the daughter of Zion became. Filthy and still proud as hell. A pig wearing them pink berets and beads around its ears. Bugged out with a little pink miniskirt. Still a pig. So this is the start of the Israelites becoming polluted, dirty. A pig wallowing in mud and slop. See, let's go to 1 Maccabees 1, verse 44. Mary Jane Rotten Crotch. <laughs> 1 Maccabees 1, verse 44. Let's go to 43. 1 Maccabees 1, we got to go up to verse 39. Her sanctuary was laid waste like a wilderness. I was speaking in the spirit. So the daughter of Zion became a pig wallowing in mud. Wow. Let's read that again. First Maccabees 1 and 38. And so much that the inhabitants of Jerusalem fled because of them, whereupon the city was made a habitation of strangers and became strange to those that were born in her and her children left her. 
Her sanctuary was laid waste like a wilderness. Her feasts were turned into mourning, her Sabbaths into reproach, her honor into contempt. As had been her glory, so was her dishonor increased. Her excellency was turned into mourning. So the daughter of Zion became abominable, filthy, as a woman removed or in a menstruous cloth on her, unclean. First Maccabees 1, verse 40, as had been her glory, so was her honor increased. As had been her glory, so was her dishonor increased, and her excellency was turned into mourning. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to the whole kingdom that all should be one people. Where have we heard this? All should be one. Here in America, they'll give that as a punchline. It's an advertisement, but it's not backed up with action. We're first fired, last hired, three-fifths of a man, second-class citizen. But on paper, one nation, indivisible, one God under heaven with liberty and justice for all. Some bogus punchline. Sound like a damn Burger King commercial. Or We Are the World song. It's all a punchline or an advertisement. But it's not, it's not followed with sincerity. Yup. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. So what does that mean? The Israelites were being called Greeks. The Israelites were being called Greek citizens under the Greek captivity. One people. Brother Gamar Ayash, Ezekiel 39 and 23. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity because they trespass against me. Therefore hid I my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies. So fell they all by the sword, according to their uncleanness and according to their transgression have I done unto them and hid my face from them. So when the Lord says he hid his face from us, we became castaways, or as the heathen. So we lost our heritage, language, custom, and religion, or worships. Because when the light of the glorious gospel shines unto us, we are Hebrew and we are Israelites. So we lost that and started calling ourselves what? Greeks then Romans, then Americans. I know you see it. So when he hid his face from us, we started calling ourselves after the heathen and took on their garments, which means their worships, their language, their rituals, their customs. See, 1 Maccabees 1 Let's go to verse 41 again. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people and everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrifice unto idols, and profane the Sabbath. Just like today, we're not worshiping the Sabbath on the new moon. The new moon is when it's blackened out, but there's a small slither 
of light going around the outer edge or the outer rim. So even unto this day, the Holy Sabbath is profane. Brother Gabar Ayash, Deuteronomy 28 and 37. And thou shall become an astonishment and a proverb and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. So the Lord calls us to be dispersed, scattered, and to take on the covering of the other nations, to be called black, Hebrew, Afro-American, Greek, Roman. There is neither Jew nor Greek. So the southern kingdom Many of them were cut off because it was unlawful to profess himself or herself to be a Jew. First Maccabees 1, verse 43. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. Many are doing that still to this day. For well, the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land, worshiping the golden retriever with blonde hair and blue eyes. Follow the strange laws of the land, worshiping a rock and circling a rock and bowing down to a stone strange laws of the land, painting Easter eggs and trying to search out hidden eggs that are colorful. That's strange laws, which is giving homage to the fertility goddess. Um, what's her name? Ashtar or Ishtar. And in the Greek, Aphrodite or Athena. The Romans would later call her Diana, the Roman goddess, or the ancient name Ashtate or Ishtar or Asherah, Easter. So you Israelites are still doing this to this day. And a lot of you Jakes are following your woman to destruction. The Bible says through the woman was the beginning of all sin and through her, we all die. So these commercials will say it's for the kids or it's to make your family happy. Of the woman came the beginning of sin and through her, we all die. So these commercials, these holy or holidays cater to women and children. Advertisement cater 70 to 75% to women and children. Esau is a wizard, a warlock, and he is the devil that the Bible speaks of, a so-called white man. See, 1 Maccabees 1, verse, wow, see, verse 45, and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple and that they should profane the Sabbath and festival days and pollute the sanctuary and holy people. Set up, set up altars and groves and chapels of idols and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts. How many went to a pig picking at these churches? that are set up. So these are the groves, the, <laughs> the unclean altars now in these churches. How many ever went to a pig picking at these churches? I knew I did. So these are the same people ruling over us today to cause us to go off, to help keep us at the bottom because the covenant was only made with Israel. 
Let's read about this pig picking again. Look up the book, um, Delectable Negro. They would even form these picnics, which is an abbreviation of pick a nigger, where they would roast Israelites and slowly turn them around like a rotisserie over a fire. And some of them would pick parts to either eat or take home as souvenirs right at the church service. You can look this up. I got the book, Delectable Negro. So these Edomites are straight savage. And if you're following them, or though hand, join in hand, you're going to fall by the sword. And it's going to be an applause in the background. An applause for following the savage man. Beware the beast man. Because he will make a desert out of your home and my home. This man is the devil that the Bible speaks of. Talking about some delectable Negro. You got to pay for that, Sleazy E. You got to pay for that. See? <clears throat> Set up altars and groves and chapels of idols. And sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts that they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation, profane things, to the end that they might forget the law and change all the ordinances. And whosoever would not according, 1 Maccabees 1 and 50, And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he should die. So this was the death sentence to follow the ways of the Israelite customs and worships and forsake or reject the Greek ways. So the Israelites begin to say, I'm a Greek or Grecian. The Grecians knew that they were Israelites. But those Jakes that were just calling themselves Greek, they were totally cut off later down the road from our forefathers. Brother Jim Escobar Adama, Isaiah 66, verse 18. For I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues and they shall come and see my glory. And I will set a sign among them, and I will send those that escape of them unto the nations to Tarshish, pull and lud, and draw the bow to Tobiah and Javan and to the isles afar off that have not heard my fame, neither have seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. So the Lord raising up his people is creating a beacon of light unto the heathen and Gentile nations. So he's getting his glory through his witnesses that he has shined this glorious gospel unto. That are forsaken in pork, shrimp, crab, lobster, feminism, white supremacy, Idolatry, worship in the damn rock. See, 1 Maccabees 1, verse 51. In the self-same manner wrote he to his whole kingdom and appointed overseers over all the people commanding the cities of Judah to sacrifice city by city. Who stood up overseers during slavery? Black cop, black cop, black cop. Whoop, whoop. That's the sound of the police. You can't make this stuff up. I promise I didn't write this. Who did that? These are the same people. That's the sound of the police, the sound of the beast. Salakia. Man, <clears throat> overseers. Officer, 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 overseer. You can't make this stuff up. 
Where is that at? First Maccabees 1 and 51. In the self same manner, wrote he to his whole kingdom and appointed overseers over all the people, commanding the cities of Judah to sacrifice city by city. Then many of the people were gathered unto him to wit every one that forsook the law. And so they committed evils in the land and drove the Israelites into secret places even wheresoever they could flee for secure. So the Israelites were trying to worship in secret to avoid being put to death for not worshiping the gods of the Greeks, for not taking on the Greek ways. There was a remnant that maintained integrity, but they had to do it in hiding. Or the Gabbard Lama said in the 70s during that war, the brothers keep Cohen. Wait a minute, where is he at? Okay. Part of the part of the verbiage got cut off. All right, let's go here. So Paul, let's go to 1 Corinthians 9 and 20. Paul had to become all things to all men. Because many Israelites were hard pressed on calling themselves Greeks. So he would just Meet them where they're, where they're at. You see, if you're on a certain level, Paul would meet them where they're at in order to make a connection with them. Yeah, Esau is the beast and his system. See, let's go to Paul. 1 Corinthians 9. 1 Corinthians 9. Let's go to verse 19. Go to 18. 1 Corinthians 9 and 18. What is my reward then? Verily, that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Hamashiach without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all that I might gain the more and unto the Jews I became a Jew that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law as under the law that I might gain them that are under the law to them that are without law as without law being not without law to God, but under the law to Hamashiach, that I might gain them that are without law. Remember we read that the Israelites were told to forsake the laws of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So Paul would meet them at the various levels that they're at in order to make a connection with the Israelites that were cut off from our heritage and those that knew they were Israelites, calling themselves Grecian. See, let me go back. It's right here. 1 Maccabees 1 and 49. To the end, they might forget the law and change all the ordinances. Ooh, you can't make this stuff up. I promise you I didn't write this. I promise you I did not write this. It's right there. So Paul, in order to engage Israelites at various walks of life, was making himself all things to all men of the diaspora of the Israelites that were dispersed. 
Let's go back to Paul. Do you know that what's crazy? Maybe you did right now. Maybe. Let's go back to Paul. First Corinthians 9. So Paul is to the circumcised, circumcised or of the circumcision. To those that didn't know who they were, he would go down to their level in order to engage them. First Maccabees 9, verse 21. To them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Hamashiach, that I might gain them that are without law. So now that Yahabashai laid down his life and became a sacrificial lamb, we have a bridge to bring them back into the fold of the diaspora, the disperse. Ephesians 2, Ephesians 2, verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us together with Hamashiach. By grace ye are saved, and have raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Hamashiach, Yahashai, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and kindness towards us through Hamashiach, Yahabashai. For by grace ye are saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Hamashiach, Yahabashai, unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore, remember that ye in time past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. So we were Gentiles because we took on the covering of their ways and worshiped their gods. So we were called Gentiles, <coughs> Greek, Grecian, Roman, American, up until this day, that at that time ye were without Hamashiach, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Hamashiach Yehoshai, who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Hamashiach. So now we are brought back into the fold. One flag, so to speak, one nation, indivisible, under the tabernacle of David. Brother Gabar Agash. 1 Corinthians 12 and 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. So we were led to worship Jebus' cross. We were led to call on Allah and worship a stone. We were led to worship Buddha. We were led to worship gods made with hands or idols. So now, through the grace and mercy of a perfect blood sacrificial lamb, Yahabashai, we are brought back into the covenant. Let's go back to Paul, 1 Corinthians 9. Verse 21, to them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Hamashiach, that I might gain them that are without law, to the weak became I as weak, 
that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. So Paul understood that every sheep in this fold carries a tremendous amount of importance. One sheep can take out an entire day to go and find even if we had the 99, that one sheep of the Lord's flock cannot be marginalized or downplayed. So Paul would cater to the needs of the flock. Is what a good shepherd does. Let's get ready to close out here. So he understood history and he understood that many Israelites became uncircumcised through due to lack of knowledge, due to lack of having a preacher or having a leader set up to preach the gospel. But he understood the history of the Greek captivity, and he understood what would happen prophetically. Let's close out here. So these are Israelites that were called Greeks or Grecian. They were Hellenized under the Greeks. So they were Greek-speaking Jews. Now you did have some of the northern kingdom that were sprinkles and scattered throughout as well. But most of these people are of the southern kingdom of the Jews, but there were sprinkles of Northern Kingdom there as well. When the Assyrians around 722 BC shipped the Northern Kingdom off to slavery to come over to the Americas and abroad, you will always keep a contingent of slaves to yourself. You don't give up all your slaves, you always keep a contingent or a small residue behind as servants. Let's go to 2 Maccabees 6. <clears throat> 2 Maccabees 6, verse... Let's get to the key point. 2 Maccabees 6, verse 7. Now we got to go to verse 5. The altar also was filled with profane things, which the law forbiddeth. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts, or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. So it was unlawful to profess being a Jew for fear of being put to death. So these are Israelites that are called Greeks or Grecians. The Grecians knew that they were Israelites. So our people were Hellenized under the reign of the Greek captivity, which is approximately 400 years. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. And in the day of the king's birth, we shouldn't be celebrating birthdays, by the way. And in the day of the king's birth, every month they were brought by bitter constraint to eat the sacrifices. And when the fast of Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus carrying envy, carrying ivy, excuse me. Now I'm not the expert, but I'm told they still do this in the Caribbean islands. These uh, Bacchus worship parades where they dress up in all this type of colorful garments and they got different idols that they carry throughout the parade in the Caribbean islands and Jamaica. 
I don't know much about it, but I've heard, I've heard a couple of brothers mention it. And in the day of the king's birth, every month they were brought by bitter constraint to eat other sacrifices when the fast of Bacchus was kept. The Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus carrying ivy. Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews that they should observe the same fashion and be partakers of their sacrifices. So these are Greek customs and rituals. Brother Aramya, 2 Maccabees 7 and 31. And thou, that has been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews, shall not escape the hands of God, for we suffer because of our sins. And though the living Lord be angry with us a little while, for our chastening and correction, yet shall he be at one again with his servants. But thou, O godless man, and of all other most wicked, be not lifted up without a cause, nor puffed up with uncertain hopes, lifting up thy hand against the servants of God. So this root of Antiochus and his sons would continue to push these abominable acts of idolatry and idol or false god worships. So under this captivity, we there's the, uh, the, the the sister that had the seven. I think she had seven kids. I think was that was I think that was the sister that had seven children that she had to watch all suffer and die by refusing to eat pork and refusing to bow down to the demands of the king. So one of them had their tongue cut out. One of them was, was fried alive or fried in a pan. Yeah, let me go here. Yep. Yeah, in 2 Maccabees 7. And they refused to eat swine's flesh. Haven't read this entire chapter in a while. Anyway, I'm going to keep it moving. So back to 2 Maccabees chapter 6. Verse 8. Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews that they should observe the same fashion and be partakers of their sacrifices. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. Then might a man have seen the present misery so this is why the Israelites were being called Greeks or Hellenized, Greek-speaking Jews. Yeah, that was a woman that had seven sons that that scripture was uh, re relating to. We'll go ahead and read that. 2 Maccabees 7, verse 20. But the mother was marvelous above all and worthy of honorable memory. For when she saw her seven sons slain within the space of one day, she bare it with good courage because of the hope that she had in the Lord. And it's interesting that it's seven. The Bible says a just man falleth seven times. So the elect are a perfect number or a number of completion that appeared to die in the sight of other men. But the end of that journey of affliction is the gift of eternal life or the kingdom of heaven. So the elect suffer, the, the elect suffereth or suffer for righteousness sake. 
slain by our enemies. So hopefully this lesson has been edifying. I attempted to paint the picture that these Greeks are Israelites. Let me get one more. So the elect appeared to die in vain for righteousness sake. But we know that the elect, the elect are going to inherit the gift of eternal life. Let's go to Galatians 3. So there's a couple of things in Galatians 3 where we know this is talking about the Israelites. It's not talking about the Edomites that took over that land of Japheth. Let's go to Galatians 3 and 2. This only what I learn of you, receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain, he therefore that ministereth to you the spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing the God, and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preach the gospel, preach before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. So this is telling us right here that the blessed seed will come through the loins of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that are already a part of the Lord's inheritance, preordained with the gift of faith. See, let's go here to verse 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So the books of the law was given to the Israelites, the covenant. The Israelites were hung on trees, just like our Lord and Savior, Shai, that was hung on a tree. So this is telling you in the context of this chapter that it's the Israelites. Cursed are they. Let's read it again. For as many as are the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, curse is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Hamashiach hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Curse is every man that hangeth on a tree. Curse is every one that hangeth on a tree. So the Israelites were given the law. The covenants were made with the Israelites. The promises were made to the Israelites. The Israelites suffered the penalty of the curse of the law, which is death, but are redeemed or purchased back from the penalty of death through the blood of the Lamb. From the Gabar Ayash, Acts 2 and 11, Acts 2 and verse 9. So the Israelites are scattered into every nation under heaven. 
Acts 2 and 9. Parthenians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. And the proselytes are newcomers to the faith. Acts 2 and 11. <laughs> Crates and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. So we're hearing this gospel go out in every language in modern times across the world wide web. It's being translated into every nation under heaven. So the church is being rebuilt now. The Tabernacle of David. Same brother, Gabar Agash, Romans 9 and 13. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Hamashiach for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. So the Israelites are custodians of the law, managers of the word, responsible for teaching. See, it says, and the service of God, teachers, preachers, pastors, prophets, ministers, messengers, where that word angel comes from, messengers of God and the promises, the gift of eternal life, rulership, and longevity or health and wellness, immortality. Romans 9 and 5, whose are the fathers, and of whom as concerning the flesh, Amashiach came, who is over all, God bless forever, Amon. So the bloodline matters. So we cannot deviate from what was promised in the Old Testament, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which takes us forward to delivering on these promises in the New Testament. So right now we're under a grace period awaiting the second return of the Messiah, of the Hamashiach, the anointed one to deliver on these promises. So this is why we must walk the straight and narrow gate awaiting the second return of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Galatians 3 and 10. For as many as are the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, curse is everyone that continueth not and all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. The covenant given to the Israelites, he showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his commandments unto Israel. As for the other nations, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. And I know I butchered it, but the bottom line is the covenant is with Israel. The law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Hamashiach have redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. See? So the Israelites were hung on trees. Our Lord and Savior, Yahawashai, was hung on a tree. So he absorbed the penalty of the breaking the law, which is death. So we are purchased by the blood of the lamb, Brother Gabar Dhamma, John 14 and 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my father, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, 
that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth. All right, so that comforter or the Holy Spirit gives us the, the ability to discern what's right and what's wrong so that we're not reprobates in the faith. Let's read this one. Brother Gabar Ayash, Psalms 147 and 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, he showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. So we are charged with keeping the commandments, and not only that, but teaching the other nations the ways of the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, how to please the Heavenly Father. So the commandments are not done away with. Our forefathers suffered death by refusing to eat pork or bow down to the gods of the other nations. So we were taught a heathenish or heathenistic way so that we can stay distance or what is that word? What is that when you got a wife that's... um. You're separated from, estranged, so that we can stay estranged from the Heavenly Father, like an estranged wife, which is the daughter of Zion. And the way we stay estranged is by not pleasing him, which is by not keeping his will. So those Jews are, or those Greeks are, Greek-speaking Jews. And most of them were of the circumcision, but then there was also a contingent that were not amongst the circumcision, that did not know that they were Israelites. So they were amongst the uncircumcision or the dispersed. Hopefully this lesson has been edified. All praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Let's read this. Brother Kayan, Brother Kahan, Uriah, Galatians 4 and 28. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. So those that are not of the God of, or the Israel of God, they cannot receive the word of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Let me see something, one second. Yep. So those that are not of the Most High cannot receive his message. You see, let's read that again. Galatians 4, verse 28. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise, but as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so is it now. So Esau, Edom, is persecuting Jacob, and most notably, the elect is in their crosshairs that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. So they're not of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, just like Ishmael or the Ishmaelites. They're against the gospel, the doctrine, because they did not get the promises. They did get the, the 12 princes and the the inherited some riches and some entitlement and um in in their reign under the heathen but they 
they did not get the internal promises. Let's read one more. Galatians 4 and 4. Galatians 4 and 3. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Only the Israelites were given the covenant, or the law, statutes, and commandments under Moses. So when you read, there is neither Jew nor Greek, the Israelites is who it's talking about. Those that were being called Greeks or Grecian or Hellenized. So th those that knew they were Israelites or of the circumcision that were Hellenized or Greek-speaking Jews. And then you had those of the uncircumcision that did not know that they were Israelites that were called Greeks. I just got a phone call by Brother Amoth. Let me see what that's about. Hopefully this has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rekhlakadash. There is neither Jew nor Greek, and these are Israelites, those that knew who they were and those that did not know who they were or of the uncircumcision. So Paul became all things to all men. Palm Yasharala. And abide the ball. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. All praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, and Kakadash, Barakatam, Pam Yasharala. We got next, Lord willing. Barakatam, Shalom.